Hi, welcome to the second half of the panel discussion uh, that uh, is the closure for the MOOC co-creation of sustainable cities. We will continue our discussion on key themes and topics that we have been uh, 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 mapping out during this course and uh, I have a renewed panel around the table with me to have a discussion on um, this final set of topics. So welcome uh, to Erik and Sigrid and Walter again. My name is Gert, Bas and Ilse. So uh, we will discuss in this panel uh, two cluster of key issues. First we will uh, dive into the international dimension and the comparative perspective that we have been using um, during the MOOC. And second we will look at the impact of uh, co-creation knowledge um, in society. So what can stakeholders learn and do with the knowledge that we kind of uh, produced in this MOOC. So first we start with this uh, issue of international and comparative dimension. And I will just give a short introduction again um, to flesh up your memories a little bit. When we uh, designed the MOOC, then we decided to work in different regions of the world. Um, so we have Asia and we have Eastern, uh, East Africa and Europe. Um, and you will be very familiar by now with the cities of Kampala, Beijing, Hanoi uh, and Amsterdam because we use them as a kind of sites for comparison of co-creation processes and actors. When we did it, uh, designed a MOOC like that, we were well aware that these uh, regions are very different uh, also when it comes to forms of co-creation. Um, the difference is, of course, has to do with First, the kind of sustainability politics that are in place in these uh, parts of the world and in the cities. Second, the development, the level of development of their social technical systems. So you could say their urban fabric and how far they are in making it more sustainable. And then third, the kind of activities that are developed by civil society actors, especially the role granted to citizens uh, in co-producing these sustainable cities. So these three variables they make for the differences between the different regions of the world system. And now we are first going to discuss a little bit some examples what we learned from uh, that international comparison. So uh, Walter, uh, when we look at uh, Beijing, you have been uh, visiting that uh, city in the context of this MOOC and worked with colleagues there in mm -hmm. terms of mobility and air quality. Um, can you tell a little bit about the sp specific uh, elements that are mentioned here uh, with respect to China? Yes, so um, I think in, in China uh, the caricature more or less is uh, that there is very, very limited space for uh, public participation or forms of co-creation. Um, and I think to some extent that is true, that you see uh, a very strong state um, and also that um, restricts the participation of citizens, for example, on air quality topics. But at the same time, um, you should nuance this picture a bit because uh, there are, and we have seen this in the MOOC, there are major developments with uh, NGOs and uh, citizens who uh, start developing their own uh, data. And online activities. Uh, online seen activities, a lot of, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, so, in these developments with big data, uh, the Internet of Things, uh, Internet thinking, um, you see uh, at least a form of public par participation uh, emerging and it seems that this is growing, but um, what yeah. the future will be, yeah. of course, uh, as yet remains secure. Yes, yes, of course, yeah. So, Sigrid, you have been working a lot in Hanoi and you've been uh, living there for many years. So. Uh, do you recognize this picture because it's also a kind of Asia and a formerly socialist country? Yes, I definitely recognize the picture and I think it's more or less similar in, in Vietnam. It's a similar kind of political context. Um, and what is so happening there, especially in the field of food, it's a different domain, but that um, you see that policy is really struggling with sustainability challenges and they do that in their own way and it's more traditional way of top-down enforcement, while at the same time you see also that civil society 
um, activities are shaping up, but it seems like separate worlds. And then there is this intermediate level of actually um, uh, private sector engagement that are also trying to deal with these challenges. And you don't see that there are still that there is communication yet between policy, uh, the citizens on the grassroots, and the intermediate intermediate level of uh, companies. Yeah. And the first relations we see we see shaping up is actually between the private sector and the citizens yeah. rather than with yeah. policy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That is because of the traditional role of the, the government and they are kind of less um, into these new kind of experiments with co-creation when compared to companies, that's, that's what you said. Yes, yes, they yeah. find it difficult to deal yeah. with it, they don't yeah. know how yet. Yeah. So companies in the Asian context could be uh, for Hanoi very important, while in China, I think it's still the state that is the leading uh, actor to decide what happens. Yes. Yeah. 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 It's even, I think it's even stronger. It's even so that some policies might even lean on private sector to okay. find resolutions yeah. For, yeah. For, yeah. Yeah, for certain issues. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, Bas, when we then go to uh, East Africa, Kampala in Uganda, um, then um, we can say another caricature is that they, of course, if you are working in slum areas like we did in this MOOC, that it's obvious that the urban fabric is very little developed. Mm -hmm. uh, so what does this bring in terms of understanding forms of co-creation that are being developed there? Um, I think co-creation is happening a lot in, a, in, in slum areas, um, very much on a, I would say, on a horizontal level. Citizens together with CBOs, uh, community-based organizations, NGOs, because they are in a kind of a survival mood, mode. Um, mm -hmm. the, with a lack of infrastructure, they, they, the people need to have water and energy and food. So they, they, they make their own fabric, so to say, to, 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 to get these uh, resources to, to the slums. Yeah. And, and what you see is now um, connections to uh, the available infrastructures, like um, uh, the water company is providing water, but only for, for those who can pay for it, with, uh, with water meters, etc. So there is some uh, development of uh, infrastructure coming in, but only when people can afford it. Yeah. For the rest, it okay. is a kind of co-creation on a horizontal level. I can see. So there you can say co-creation is very much targeted at developing the urban infrastructure because they need to water and they need sanitation yeah. and they need kind of safe food. Yeah, um, yeah. and it is also with the, with the private and the informal sector, so yeah. the, 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 the way people uh, trade with the charcoal or with the alternative, alternatives for charcoal, uh, water trading, uh, the, all is, yeah. is, is in informal sectors and the co-creation is happening on that level. I see. Yeah. So, Erik, you are uh, with the Amsterdam Metropolitan Solution Institute, uh, so working in Amsterdam, and they always say, uh, well, Amsterdam, then uh, it's the caricature is that everything is possible there. So uh, <laughs> it's the most uh, suitable place to do co-creation, and that you can see co-creation happening there so often. Is that, is that true? or? Um, partly I think it's true. There are a lot of initiatives in Amsterdam uh, of co-creation uh, on the initiative of all different kinds of parties. I mean, for, uh, from the initiative of uh, citizens, but also the municipality, but also business. Um, and I think one follows the other, but um, there's also still a lot of top-down, uh, contrasting bottom-up things. So I think you can find all the examples uh, yeah, that you look for. Yeah. I'm not sure whether it's an ideal place for co-creation, <laughs> because there is also a lot of legislation. I think okay. in the Netherlands is quite well known for it. Yeah, but what you mentioned is that there is this um, attempt to integrate uh, and to collaborate among different layers of uh, government, for example, so that you have companies working with municipal authorities and working with NGOs and citizens. And uh, unlike then what you mentioned for Vietnam, they are aware that you need uh, all these parties and these stakeholders to make an effective form of co-creation. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, um, so this about a little bit of the, the differences and emphasizing what is different, but now um, this comparative perspective. So we, throughout the MOOC we have discussed uh, different forms of co-creation and uh, we have shown them to be uh, locally specific in some respects, but other forms of co-creation were more kind of uh, shared among cities. Um, for example, we have seen um, mobility issues and the introduction of all kind of apps in China where they can compete with Amsterdam citizens. Uh, we have seen Kampala and the activities of NGOs that can compete with NGOs in, in other parts of the world in being very 
pronounced and having their own agenda and being very self confident uh, so, so next to differences, there are similarities. And uh, Ilse, in this uh, course, um, we just try to make use of that uh, by building a comparative approach. Uh, and we kind of had that mirrored also in the learning goals that we formulated for the MOOC. Can you tell a little bit more about that? Yes, yeah, so it was really one of the aims to well, engage the learner in the different contexts and to show these differences across the world, but also to show that there are actually similarities and that formal uh, forms of co-creation are happening in different parts of the world, but also informal parts, uh, forms of co-creation. So it's not as clear-cut as it sometimes seems that some forms of co-creation only happen in Amsterdam and some forms only happen yeah. in Vietnam, but there are differences and similarities. And we also hope that the learner yeah, could compare it to its own uh, situation and could reflect yeah. On its own. Uh, yeah, so these place. kind of learning goals is first to get to know the diversity in that exists around the world, and then knowing from that diversity what is relevant for your situation and not. So that also you you get to know more about your local situation by comparing it with situations that are different. Yes, yes, indeed. Yes. And also by working on the re research proposal, I think that was really a, a way for them to yeah reflect and uh, integrate the knowledge uh, yeah. for their own environments. Okay. About this uh, research proposal, yeah, that's, uh, Eric? That's, that's why we, uh, basically that's very much linked up to the learning goals is the final assignment um, in which uh, the learners or the practitioners, if you like, um, yeah, basically use the, the concept of co-creation in order to find new knowledge if, if a problem is not clear, the sustainability issue, or if you um, have a very clear problem but you want to use co-creation to solve or address the issues in a kind of project. Yeah. So well, what I think was very striking in, in the whole MOOC is the versatility in the different ways of, of co-creation. So there is not a single solution for it, but just be, becoming aware of all these different situations brings it also um, as a tool of capacity building when you're unsure what way to proceed even in, in your own context. So also that way I think it's very interesting to be aware of it, that it is so flexible and it's, um, it's so contextual that you can mold it uh, also uh, yeah, yeah. in your own uh, profession. Yeah. But and at, oh, sorry. <laughs> at the same time, I think uh, if you look back at those uh, three variables, for, for example, um, uh, that what we tried is um, to show that you it's, you cannot just take one form of co-creation and simply copy it to another uh, place, yeah. Uh, yeah. but yeah. you should look at the dynamics of yeah. co-creation and yeah. the dynamics between the different actors also at um, uh, the material or infrastructural context of a city yeah. uh, and then indeed mold uh, a form of co-creation to this specific yeah. uh, setting. I think it's a very good summary of what we aim to achieve here. Um, when you, um, in conclusion, we on the one hand see that on the global level there is a shared agenda for making cities more sustainable and to adapt cities to flooding and to climate uh, impacts. So I think that's a worldwide agenda, so it's a global setting that is shared. On the other hand, we have been focusing on different places and zooming in in particular cities to show that local issues do make a difference and matter. Um, and then, of course, so you can say it's global and local at the same time. Uh, but when you look at cities more in particular, I think one of the uh, things that we have uh, learned along the way is that cities are a very powerful level of making um, uh, politics for uh, sustainability transitions. So it's not just national levels or even world regions, but cities can make a difference. And in that respect, we discussed uh, city networks uh, as a kind of very important arena or an instrument or a network to make co-creation uh, work at the city levels. Mm -hmm. So, um, Bas, can you tell a little bit about um, city networks? What in it, what's in it for them, for example, from a Kampala perspective, from the Global South? Well, I know that Kampala is really um uh, moving upwards uh, into these networks, so they are really uh, keen on uh, on being part of these global networks of cities. So they're really uh, coming up 
as a, as a city, and as a city level, they are very powerful also as compared to the, the yeah. national level yeah. of, uh, of yeah. Uganda. So yeah. the city, uh, it's really the metropole of U Uganda. Yeah. And the, sh the strong politicians are, are there in the city. Yeah. So, uh, and they are really yeah. linking up to international conferences and, uh, and networks of, uh, of city level politics. Yeah. 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 I think that's uh, something that. And the same goes for Amsterdam, of course. So with mm. the, the C40 network, the ECLI network, they, they are yeah. all a part of that. And, uh, yeah. Of course, that there is a development of, uh, like, uh, uh, if mayors rule the world, th that book. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so uh, you see uh, that there was a void in, the, in, in international politics, and cities are really taking up that. Yeah. Which also um, attempts to become the best, most sustainable city yes. in mobility yeah. or yeah. energy. And if you don't have that, you go for food or whatever. But yeah. ranking and yeah. having a good sustainability performance as a city. It's very important um, for your, your future, your profile. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, thank you. I think this is um, um, a good summary of um, some of the uh, experience that we did with the international comparison in Almuk.